YouTube, what's good? Send you back at it again with another video. So today I bring you a crossbow and daggers build. This build is going to be a high sustained DPS, high burst DPS build. The primary reason for this build is so that we actually have a crossbow and daggers build out there that can in fact basically carry you into end game and will get better as we get better gear. So as a brief overview, as I said before, you have high sustain DPS, high burst DPS. This features essentially infinite mana as long as you uh, basically get at least, I would say recommended is 120 to 110 on your mana regen. Uh, this is through gear. You would primarily want to have decent survivability with a decent health pool. And outside of that, you don't really need to worry about significantly high health regen or running health recovery pots because as long as you have a healer and a tank that know exactly what they're doing and you're hitting your parries and staying at range when you need to like a normal person you won't be getting dumped on nearly hard enough to ever really need any more than 7700 hp in pve however for pvp which is what i'm starting to gear towards now that i'm fully comfortable in pve i would highly recommend that you stay Till we get to the gearing section so you see where i'm going to take the build that way you will get a full picture of what i'm trying to do in terms of health and survivability as well as keeping the damage and making sure that we still essentially have infinite mana regen so for the first part let's go ahead and get into our stats we're going to go into the stat sheet here <clears throat> as you can see we have 20 strength, 45 dexterity, 22 wisdom, and 42 perception. Right off the bat, we are at a 2400 gear score, and I will start out by saying that this build is full free-to-play. Now, obviously, being a full free-to-play build, <clears throat> a lot of the gear that you get is going to depend on your RNG, and this is why I'm actually coming out with this build, because as a full free-to-play player, a lot of the builds that you see pretty much fully rely on you having specific gear. Now, there is a mandatory piece of gear. That mandatory piece of gear is going to be the Wicked Thorns from Cave of Destruction. However, <clears throat> if you cannot find the Wicked Thorns, even though it is mandatory for the build down the line, you can still run pretty much any dagger that you want because the bread and butter of this build is your stats and your rotation. So... We have 42 perception. This is mainly for the buff duration. We have 45 dexterity. This is mainly for the bonus damage. And what I'm trying to do now is get to about 50 strength for the heavy attack chance because I'm starting to focus fully on end game and PVP. And over time, what you're going to notice for both PVE and PVE is that bonus damage does not scale very well for end game. So a lot of people are probably going to tell you to go with bonus damage. And while that is a good stat, what I will say is that since I know for a fact that bonus damage does not scale super high into the end game due to the value staying pretty low, what you're going to notice is that if you happen to deal damage with an attack that deals like 100 damage, right? Obviously, getting 50 points of bonus damage on that attack, making it 150 damage is a ginormous increase. However, if you're dealing 7,000 damage, getting an additional 50 points is not a massive increase and will most likely not make a difference especially when you have damage mitigation, damage reduction, evasion, endurance, so forth and so on. So as you start to transition from early end game into maxed out end game, I would highly recommend that you get rid of bonus damage and you start focusing on heavy attack chance, critical hit damage, critical chance, damage reduction, skill damage boosts are much better than bonus damage. And then once you get all of that done, you can probably start adding a little bit more bonus damage on just as free dump stats if you have space for it. So, as I said, as you can see here, we have our mandatory weapon, which is going to be the Wicked Thorns. You have your Stormbringer's crossbows. These are not going to be the endgame daggers. I will show you what the endgame uh, daggers. I will show you what the endgame crossbow will be uh, later towards the end of the video. However, for now... If you can get some Stormbringer crossbows or honestly, whichever kind of epic crossbows you can get or fully traded blue crossbows, as long as you have heavy attack chance, hit chance and crit chance, you're going to be just fine. Just make sure that you mandatory hit 40 dexterity for your bonus damage early game and early end game. And then as you start to move on, you can pretty much just leave this here. 
and start to focus on hitting 50 strength and maybe buffing up some of your perception. Wisdom just happens to be a trash stat uh, for this class because you have infinite mana regen, so having maximum mana doesn't really matter. Now, <clears throat> for the gear, we are running Phantom Wolf with Deadeye's Cloak, the Heroic Garb of the Resistance, Grip of the Executioner, Pants of the Resistance, Glade Stalker Boots, Rutane's Necklace of Wonder, which is incredibly easy to get. You get this just by leveling up through the Codex. The Bracers of the Primal King, the Eldritch Ice Band, Abyssal Grace Band, and the Belt of the Endless Slaughter. Now, moving into the full endgame setup, which is going to be what I primarily target farm for the endgame setup, you're going to need two pieces of the ghost wolf now these pieces are specific because i have a setup that i'm actually going to be using to pretty much min max all of my stats in the places that i want them to be as well as getting good implicit traits on these items so that i don't lose from a lot of the pre-built areas that i have here from early game so <clears throat> As I said, when you start to transition to the fully end game build, which is why you don't want to put too much investment on your early end game build, because you're going to end up changing pieces out. What you're going to need for the fully end game setup is two pieces of the Ghost Wolf set. I already have one here, and those pieces are going to be the head and the boots. Then you're going to get two pieces of the field general, the chest and the pants. After you have your helmet and your boots and then your chest and your pants, you're going to keep the grip of the executioner mainly because you obviously have the added attack speed, perception, the mana regen. You're going to replace this necklace with whatever necklace you can get that can have cooldown speed, attack speed, and you want mana regen. Bracers of the Primal King are going to stay here until I can find something better because I want the perception and the bonus damage, but if you find something better for yourself, then that's perfectly fine. The Abyssal Grace Band, the Eldritch Ice Band, both of these are going to get rotated out for better gear when I decide exactly what I'm looking for here. The Belt of Endless Slaughter is mandatory and it's going to stay here because of the max health, the damage reduction, the weakened resistance, and then you can get additional resistances. Now, what we're going to do here is head over to the live testing. The live testing is going to basically show you exactly how we do the rotation and is gonna give you examples of what the rotation can and will look like, how much damage you're going to do, and essentially get you up to speed on what the build is so that you can actually sit there and start getting into end game or progressing through the early game just a bit easier. As I said, this build fully focuses on your rotation with the gear being supplementary, but as you get into fully end game setups, the gear is going to become more of your bread and butter status as you're pretty much going to be mastered with the rotation and just getting the better traded out gear is just going to make the build even better. So let's go ahead and get into the live damage testing. Alrighty, so we are at the test dummy location. At the test dummy location, I will go over the rotation with you so that you are able to understand what the rotation is. And then after the rotation, I'll go ahead and show you exactly how to do it down at the test dummy so that way you can actually get a illustrated version and a live representation of how to do this so you don't mess it up it will take some practice because this is a high apm skill and this is a high apm class understanding that this is the hardest class to play however you're going to get the biggest reward in my opinion so without further ado let's go ahead and get into our skills so for these skills, we're starting off with the daggers, we have cleaving moonlight with consecutive use and the additional damage. We have lightning infusion, thunderclouds bombing, fatal stigma with skill distance increased and damage increase. We have knife throw without any kind of conversion kits because this is mainly used for the selfless diffusion cooldown combo as well as just getting a little bit more sustained dps on the target and then we have mad sword dance which is a conversion from frenzy, uh, frenzied sword dance for the bow we have quick fire and nimble leap and for quick fire we are running minimum chain fire increase with the damage increase and then for nimble leap if you are familiar with the nimble leap cooldown you already know how this works you have consecutive use with cooldown reset basically for those of you that have no idea how this works if you hit quick fire and you hit nimble leap but you are running the cooldown reset when you hit nimble leap you will automatically reset the cooldown on quick fire allowing you to cast it again so you can hit three quick fires in a row if you hit quick fire nimble leap quick fire nimble leap and quick fire again allowing you to get out a lot of burst damage now aside from that we have detonation mark which is a 
conversion kit to mortal mark then we have selfless diffusion with no conversion kits because this is just for the offhand uh, double attack chance increase and then you want the additional cooldown effects we have mother nature's protest which honestly you can use any arrow but i personally choose lightning arrow and flame arrow depending on what i'm doing and then i have mana exchange with the skill effect enhanced conversion kit now for the passives starting off with the crossbow, crossbow mastery we have chain fire you are going to get everything on the bottom row and if you have more mastery ranks than me then you should be pretty much around here for calm aim once you get here i would say just stop and start getting some defensive options and then for your dagger you're going to do the entire assassination tree and then stop at sorrowful silence so for the passives very important we have wrathful edge ambidexterity then we're running bloodlust with nature's power then you have assassin's instincts then you have murderous energy which because we're running thunderclouds and you're pretty much going to have 100 percent of time on thunderclouds you really don't need this i just don't have anything else fully leveled to where i want it so i could put it here but i will change this out so if you have something that you feel could be better here you can very much put it there especially if it's pertaining to your build or your version of the build then you have destructive fang and piercing strike now the rotation while difficult is very easy what you're going to do is proc your mother nature's protest once you do this this is going to be active as long as you have mana and with the way that i have this set up you're pretty much always going to have mana keep in mind i'm not running any food i don't have any kind of mana regeneration passive outside of mana exchange and the base mana region that i have from the equipment which is my gear if you can get from 90 to 110 mana base region then you have mana exchange you're gonna have infinite mana i i kid you not meaning if you can get to 90 mana region from your equipment and you can run food and you're using mana exchange you will have infinite mana so very briefly let's go ahead and go over this rotation once you proc your mother nature's protest you're immediately going to proc lightning infusion and mana exchange right after that you're immediately going to proc selfless diffusion and then you're going to go off with fatal stigma <clears throat> and detonation mark once you do that you're going to go into your quick fire nimble leap combo after your combo is finished you're immediately going to cast cleaving moonlight twice then you're going to go ahead and reproc your lightning infusion by doing the nine second dagger attack you're going to get off a of thunderous bombing and then immediately go into your knife throwing this is going to reset your cooldowns because selfless diffusion is still up and it's going to bring the cooldown of thunderous bombing down a little bit once you do that all you need to do is go ahead and reproc your mad sword dance with cleaving moonlight so you're going to hit this once then you're going to hit this again once then you're going to hit mad sword dance once again then you're going to hit mad uh cleaving moonlight one more time and then you're going to hit the lightning infusion into another thunderous bombing once you hit your lightning infusion into another thunderous bombing, all you really need to do is wait on your selfless diffusion. So this is where you get into your sustained DPS. After you go ahead and get your second thunderous bombing off and you're doing your second sustained DPS rotation, it's very simple. You're gonna hit detonation mark. And after you hit detonation mark, all you need to do is hit cleaving moonlight, knife throwing, quick fire, that's it. Then you just pretty much light attack because you should have about uh, six seconds left on your selfless diffusion and once this comes back these two are going to be off cooldown so you can hit all three of these and restart your entire rotation this is going to allow you to have massive burst damage as well as very good sustained dps which crossbow and dagger right now severely lacks due to the lack of rotations being in the game so let's go ahead and show you how this rotation actually works that way you can see the chunk of filth that i'm able to delete and then you can pretty much just adapt this and take it Alrighty, so down here at the training dummy, you can clearly see that we have 405,000 HP left on this training dummy. So, what we are going to do is go ahead and do the rotation here live for you. That way you can see how much damage we can actually do and how much health we actually chunk.
Alrighty, so that was basically two full rotations. You had the burst damage rotation at the beginning, and then you had two different sustained DPS rotations. Once you get done with the two different sustained DPS rotations, that is a full rotation. So as you can see, we started off at 400k and we're literally 200k in. That's insane. That is actually insane. Especially because now you have sustained DPS and on top of that you have high burst DPS. And this, in my opinion, is better than loading all of your damage into detonation mark and then praying for a high hit. And because you're doing it this way with your three buffs, you're able to guarantee that you, nearly every time you hit detonation mark, you're always going to get your six second drop on detonation mark, which allows you to pack as most damage into the mark as possible. So, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys can actually get this build down and get the rotation down so you guys can start to do some real DPS. And if I happen to see you guys in dungeons, hey, hopefully we mow some bosses because I'm currently in the process of two-phasing most of the bosses in the game and I'm having more fun than I did when I started. So, like I said, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you guys leave a like, make sure you subscribe, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.